Greetings, citizens of the internet. I'm Static Buzz, and in this video, I'm going to be going over some Planet Coaster early game tips. I have five of them for you, so hopefully, you find them useful. Let's get started. First tip plan your paths with congestion in mind. Early on, you're just going to want to get rides up, you're going to be trying to do things quick. Don't. Take your time, make your paths so that you think about congestion while you're doing it. My first park was so congested people couldn't get around and in certain areas where there was I had stores right off the main path and rides right next to them and all kinds of stuff it was so congested there people could not move and they were actually going off of the paths and into the grass and it was just pretty nasty so what I started doing is making my paths wider and separating them so that they didn't cross so on this one I've got two paths on the outside for my rides as you can see here and they go all the way around to the back and then I've got a center path that is eventually going to be where I'm going to make roller coasters and what this does is it alleviates congestion in certain areas there's still going to be some areas that you can't help it but this isn't bad people can still move and get around and they're not going off into the grass, they're not really bumping into each other, they're just kind of moving out of each other's way. This is good. Now, how do you get the paths this wide? Because at first I wasn't quite sure. But it's pretty easy. This here, when you go to paths, is your width. It starts off at a default 4, which is this small little section here. And it goes up to 10, which is this large section here. Length is the distance of the section that gets added or the length of the section that gets added that's probably a better way of saying it so if I have a five length and I add a section it'll be that long if I change that to one it'll be that long alright so we don't want to add that let's undo that and you guys get the general idea so make your main paths really wide so that you don't have to worry about congestion that's tip number one tip number two duplicate your buildings so when you start making buildings and you add things together and you start decorating them and then you get a final product that you're somewhat happy with like this somewhat happy with it not totally but somewhat it's a good early game shop area you're gonna wanna duplicate it you're not gonna wanna have to spend the time the half hour to an hour that it takes to redo that it's so gonna duplicate it so you click the building and then up here you'll have this little menu that pops up you can move it, edit it if you want to add some more stuff, or you can just duplicate it and move it. it takes a second because it's got to recreate all those. And then we can rotate it, make it a little nice, make sure we got paths on everything, and boom, duplicate. Now, obviously, if you're going to be doing areas that each have their own theme, this probably won't help you much, but if you're just looking for a consistent look, and you want to expand your park quickly this is a great way of doing it and I love this feature for, for that so just duplicate your building you said you just click it menu comes up you duplicate it takes a second and then there you go you move it place it however you want done deal if you don't want it you hit escape and it goes away so that's tip number two duplicate your buildings tip number three watch your rides and what I mean by that is hopefully we'll get something that uh, will help me demonstrate that but um, what I mean by watch your rides and I, I mean watch them right after you put them down and see how people get on and get off of your rides say like this radius here the entrance is here so the queue is here and it's perfect because they just go right here and they get on and no problem I know the exit is not in the best place because I've seen people get off this one and what happens when people get off this one they get off on the right and they get off on the left well obviously the people on the right exits right there for them not a problem but the people on the left they come off they come down here by the entrance of the queue then they walk around and they walk all the way down here and then they walk back up and they get out and they leave leave the the ride the problem with that much time being taken is new people can't get on the ride until everybody's exited the ride so that makes this ride less efficient 
ride by ride than if I was to move the exit down here and have the right people come down here and the left people come down here. It would be even easier if we were allowed to have two exits, but we're not. Because I could just put one here and one here and it would be even quicker, but maybe that's something they can add later on. So, like I said, third tip is watch your rides. Watch how people get on, watch how people get off, and adjust your entrance and your exits accordingly so that they're more efficient. That is tip number three. All right, and now we're gonna move on to tip number four. I'm gonna zoom past all this so that I can show you my examples. Tip number four, ride placement matters. All right, so what I mean by that is ride placement on this Screaminator and this Insanity over here is poor. See, there's a small queue here and no queue here. I'll be surprised if there's more than a handful of people. There's, what, three, four people. They were all one group that's on the Screaminator here. And that's it. That, that ride's not very efficient. That's not a revenue earning ride. That's not a rrr. I'm going to make that a thing. R-E-R. -E revenue earning ride. Not not there. So, why is this not a rrr? <laughs> That's not going to work. How about revenue generating? It's not an RGR. Revenue generating ride. Why this is not an RGR is its placement near these family rides. So if you look down at rides and you hover over a ride, you will see the type of ride it is. Star Wheel. Ferris Wheel is a family ride. Makes sense. Sky Ace. Thrill Ride. Mm, kind of kind of in between a family ride and a thrill ride, but it, they, they label it a thrill ride. Family ride, thrill ride. Well, the Screaminator is a thrill ride, and the Insanity is an extreme thrill ride. I have it by family rides. Everything over here is a family ride, except for this here, which they consider a thrill ride. But it's like I said, I consider this to be kind of in between a thrill ride and a family ride. It's like the in betweener. But anyways, so because all the people that are coming down here, the demographics for these rides are family and young adults, not young adults, teens, and those type of people don't really go for the thrill rides. So you won't get a whole lot of traffic on these rides. To show you how placement matters, I have the same rides. You can see the screaming there, there and then there's an insanity over there you can't see because of the sun. We'll go take a look at those. Those are placed by other thrill rides. Oh, before I do that, let me show you the demographic here. So, uh, that's probably not a good one. No, I guess it is. Single teen, adult couple, adult group, teen couple. Mostly on this side, it's family and teens on this side. Uh, these other ones are kind of the off ones. Single adult, I guess maybe family group. But you get the idea. The demographics here is for the family rides because that's what's over here. Now if we go over here. Oops, going to the wrong place. Screaminators are over here. This Screaminator is by other thrill rides. Look at that queue. Queue is like 10 times, if not more, longer than the other one over there. Because these are all thrill rides. These people are looking for this type of ride. And it's about the same distance as the other one. Um. So yeah, there we got that as an example, and then we go over here to the Insanity, and it's not 10 times as long queue-wise, but it is 3 to 4 times as long, and the ride is filling up before it runs, so it's efficient, and that's all you need. That is because these placements are by the other thrill rides, and if we click on some of these people here, oops, I clicked on the ride. Single teen, single teen, uh, I guess we're not really going to be getting uh, the young adults that I thought we were going to get. I guess teens are young adults, adult couples, but you won't see family over here. There won't be family in these rides. <laughs> it just won't be. It's not going to happen. These are going to be teen groups and adult groups and adult couples and single adults those type of things those are the kind of people that de the demographics that like thrill rides so 
Ride placement matters. All right, so enough rambling about that. Let's go to my fifth tip, which is probably more important than all the other ones combined. And that is queue length matters. So if you see here, those people just got turned away from that ride because the queue was too long. If you go to their little thought bubble, it's a shame the whirly rig one is full. This person is going to go up there, and if we look at their thought bubble, this park is great. Hopefully it updates automatically. Did they actually get in line? Oh, there must have been enough room for one, but not three. Alright, so anyways, the point is, if the queues are short, then people will get turned away. Like this little couple right here, this family group. So, um, you don't want short queue links. You want to have queue links that have some excess at the end of them. That's not so great. That's going to fill up pretty quick. Same with that. People are getting turned away. This is better. There's a small gap at the end that's probably not going to get full, especially because this is starting to load up for the next ride. So this will all move forward and it'll start filling up again, but it's not going to get where it's turning people away. Same with the radius, not going to turn people away. Uh, insanity, not going to turn people away. This ride is turning people away. Not good practice. Not at all. So the best method for doing that is to put this ticket booth. No, it doesn't look like a ticket booth, but that's what they call it. As close to the path as possible. And then to do the snake-like effect weaving in and out until you can get to the to the entrance but make this queue as long as possible I could have used a little more here this fills up quite often and this one's not so bad but if it was in a better spot like over in a busier area I would probably have to make it longer and like I said these these rides are turning people away it just kills me to see that this ride's turning people away this ride's turning people away. Same, well that one was. So, yep, this one definitely turns people away. This queue is so short. I was trying to make it look as pleasing as you know I could on the eyes and make it like uniform, and except for when I got to the exit, I decided to go wide for some reason. I don't know why I did that. But anyways, don't worry about looks. I think actually the curve look after you get them I think it actually looks better if you do it right that not so much but yeah I do think it looks better if you do it right like this goes around this one so it's not too bad if I would have went over if I would have went like up and around and around and around and around and around it would have been longer and it would have looked okay so I think that looks pretty good so anyways that's my five tips plan your paths with congestion in mind duplicate your buildings right that one Watch your rides so you can see people getting on and off and see how efficient your exits are and your entrances are. Ride placement matters. You don't want to have a screaming a screaminator and an insanity near family ones like I do. So thrill rides by thrill rides, family rides by family rides. Now I say that not I haven't tested putting family rides on one side of a path and thrill rides on the other side. I don't know how that'll work because I haven't really done that yet to test it. I probably should. Probably should have done it before I did this video, but you get the idea when it comes to ride placement. And the last one, queue length matters. You want to have a long enough queue to accommodate everybody, not short little dinky ones like this. Better, better, better. Really good. This is really long. So. Those are my five tips for the early game of Planet Coaster. I hope you guys find them useful. If you guys have anything to add, have your own tips, comments, whatever, put them down in the comments. If you have any suggestions on future videos that you would like to see for this uh, Planet Coaster series, let me know. I'm uh, right now currently exploring ideas for my next video. I haven't really come up with one. I'm thinking either show the different kind of coasters that are available and show how to make coasters and do what you want to do except for it's kind of hard because there's no certain things are missing because it's early alpha you can't do loops 
you can do twists and stuff like that, but you can't do loops right now. Um, and that makes it kind of rough if you want to do some more extreme rides. So uh, that one might have to wait, but uh, other than that, the only ideas I have is to do a Let's Play on a very efficient, very awesome looking park and just do everything, try to make it like just as awesome as possible and in the way it looks and the way that it is revenue generating and all that kind of stuff. That might be my next series. But unless somebody comes up with a better idea in the comments, I'll wait for that and then uh, make my decision on my next video from that. So as usual, show your support by clicking like and subscribe. I know I ramble a lot, but hopefully it doesn't get you down. Or I hope you find it entertaining at least. Rambling can be entertaining, <laughs> I suppose. Um, I'm rambling right now. So until next video, take care. Bye-bye now. Static Buzz. Out.